Hi guys, welcome to this next session on Microsoft Access. In this session, we're going to look at reports. We're going to use a report wizard and we're going to create a report ourselves. But first of all, let's just recap this database. I'm going to open this table address details, double click on it. There's the details in that table, it's just names and addresses. We are going to create a report based on that table. You can also create reports based on queries, which we did last time. There's a report based on the query para. But this session, we're going to create a report based on this table. So clicking on create, this is the reports bit. Now, if I click on the report option first off, it just drops it on the screen, as you can see, in layout mode, which basically means I can adjust all these by clicking on one and they all move across. Now in later sessions we'll look at creating reports using concatenation which is a far better thing I think but for now we would have to manually adjust these column widths. But you can see there this is dropping over onto two pages. If I go into report design I could uh, adjust things in design this is the structure of the report. And then if I close this one down, I'm not going to save that one. I'm just going to create a new one. Create, this time I'm going to use the wizard. Now, when you open the wizard, you get different options. All your tables and queries will be listed. There's our one. You have got the option to take over all the fields or just several fields. For this example, I'm going to take them all. Then I'm going to follow the wizard through. The first step is, asks me, do I want to group by anything? In this example, I am going to group by city, the city field. So basically, it would list this information by city. I'm going to click next. I've got the option to sort particular fields if I want to. I'm going to leave all this as default. Next. It's probably advisable if you've got more than five or six columns to put your reports to landscape, so I'll do that. You've got different options here. You can see the layout there. I'm going to leave it on the first one, stepped, and then next. Now, keeping the naming convention consistent, RPT, looking at the table address details, and then finish. And then you can see the wizard has grouped it by cities. So there's all these people from Bradford. Um, you can see the fields there. This is the drop down list that's selected. And you've got truncated fields at the end there, like, like I mentioned earlier. Now, if I go into um, print, pre uh, come out of print preview and go into design, this is the sort of thing that you would have to do. So basically, I'm going to need to widen and move these fields. So to widen that, do the same on these, let's move it over there slightly, and this, although this isn't going to take too long, it, in some cases it can take quite a long time to get this correct, if I have a look at that, if I click on view, there you go, I have got rid of the truncated fields by just widening the boxes in design view. Now. Let's close that one down again. I'm not going to save that one either. In fact, I'll just delete that one off as well. Now, to create a report yourself, you follow this process. Create report, report design option. And as with forms, you get a blank screen. And also with forms, you need to attach the relevant table. So we're using address details. So get rid of that. And then the fields appear there. Now, if I select all the fields and drag and drop like we did in forms, you can see that that will quickly drop all the fields into position. However, when you look at these, if I go into report view, you can see them there, not very nice. If I come back into design, if I go into print preview, You can see each record is sitting rather scruffily on the left hand side. I'll close print preview which will take me back into design. Now 
to achieve this similar report that we had through the wizard I would need to do this so I'm going to basically delete all these fields still selected and I'm going to try and recreate what we had in the wizard so group and sort in at the top add a group because we want to group by city and then you get the city header there and then you bring the city field in like so and you keep having a look to see what that looks like now you can see that Bradford's got a box around it I don't particularly want that so if I go to properties and format I can get rid of the um, the border of that border style solid select that to transparent have a look and then it's gone now come back into design now as with forms you can move these boxes independently by selecting the the top left corner like so I'm also going to make these bold and I'm going to reduce the space underneath and have a quick look again city Bradford I might not even need the label actually I'm just gonna um, get rid of that label and then I can move Bradford like so there you go back into design <coughs> now I need to bring in the rest of the field so staff ID um, I want to bring them underneath that can be made smaller and then they can all be moved up to the top like so title same thing, move the, the title onto the top, move it into position. Now there is a feature that I mentioned earlier on called concatenation, which allows you to join things together rather than doing this, um, where you've got a label and a separate box for the field. With concatenation, you would be able to create one box and join all these fields together and the box can grow and shrink. Because one of the things that you have a problem with in Access is these boxes, for, for example, surname. Not everybody's surname would fit in that space. So a concatenation would solve that issue. But that's for another day. And quickly as, as quick as I can, I'll get these into position. In fact, I'm not going to bring everything over, actually. I don't need the telephone number and stuff like that. So I'll just leave those there. I'll just do... Um, county and postcode and that should do for this and then you've got to keep looking at the layout which is quite difficult to get correct the first time but once you have got it correct that is all you will have to do if I quickly look at that so all this is not lined up and you can see if I come down the screen it's not great the boxes are on there as they were for Bradford um, and these are not lined up I'll just move some of these up okay now if I highlight all of these make them bold go into the property sheet take the um, the line off It's not that one border style transparent. Let's have a look. Okay, it's still not great, but you get the idea. Now, there's a lot of space here. I'm going to, going to try and get rid of that. To get rid of that, you need to move this page footer up to the top. Tight. And if I have a quick look again. That's probably too tight. Come back out. Bring it down a little bit. Have a look. Okay, there's a gap there now, so I can see that. So print preview would look slightly different. 
Now I can set print preview so it prints one record per page. If I just go back into design tab, have a look at that. Design. If I right click on, I'll click on details and get into properties for that. I am in properties still, so we've got these features here. But if I just, I'm just going to right click on this to show you that you can get it through there as well. It brings the same box up. But this is, um, you've got force new page there and you've got options. If I go after section and then look, it doesn't do anything in that view. But if I go into print preview, you get one per page. And then you've got the option of spacing things out slightly. But there could be a lot more details in this. Now, going back into design, I am going to move all of these slightly across to the right. So it's like a step from the city. I am also going to knock that force page option off. So you, you can see them all on the same page. Um, none. That needs to be on. Let's have a look at print preview. So all the Bradford ones are there, and then the Derby ones, and so on and so on. If I close print preview. Now at the top, we've got a page header where you can type your labels. So I'm just going to put in there staff details in the same way as I did with a form. Now, I mentioned that you adjust the size of the font, of the font and the text and the colour by using these tools but it, the box itself must be highlighted not the text so the box is what you format and then the box is what you reposition now for a report header i'm right clicking on page header click on report header and footer i get this space at the top and i've got the option there of inserting the date time which I will do, okay, it gives them quite big fields. Now these are all, all locked together, so if I click on Arrange, I can remove Layout, and then they become um, separate boxes. Just get rid of that. And then just move these independently and resize these boxes. I could have uh, brought these down individually and create these individually by using an AB box which would allow me to type that information in there and I could have done that. Now if I want to insert an image there's one my logo I'll click that and draw where I want that to go let's put it there and then you can move the image if you want and the other thing that we've got at the top there is page numbers. So if I go into the footer, page footer, and then page numbers, center or right, I'll select right, um, bottom of page, footer, right, number of pages, OK. And that puts it at the bottom there. And if I have a look at this, again, I'll have to go into print preview to see that information. There's the report header. The date time is truncated, I'll have to fix that. The page header, page numbering. Close that. Come back into this. So the date, the date box needs fixing. Have a quick look. Okay, that's fixed. Now, obviously this layout isn't correct. It needs tidying up. And you do have to spend a bit of time moving things left and right and sorting it all out so it's, you're happy with it. For this example, though, I haven't got time to do that, but that is the end of this session on reports. The next session will be on relational databases, but thank you for your time.